Green's Dominion of New Zealand. Dig deep enough in this fertile soil, dig right through the world, and you come up in the green countryside of England. For New Zealand lies exactly upon the opposite side of the world to the mother country that New Zealanders call home. New Zealand's largest city, bound to the mother country by a thousand loyalties and traditions. Not least that of Christmas, which falls in the midst of summer, but which nevertheless is celebrated with turkey and plum pudding. But alas, this land of summer Christmases lapsed into a mood of rain as the Governor General and the Prime Minister, Mr. Holland, waited to greet the Queen and her husband. Yes, in Auckland, which we in New Zealand call the Queen City, there is rain to greet our Queen. But our hearts go out to this gracious lady as she steps ashore so trimly, defying the unkindness of the day. of New Zealand are here too to greet our Queen in the rain in the city streets. A greeting in our own style. We are two peoples, the Maoris and ourselves the Pākehā. Two peoples living alongside happily. And this young Queen is our one and only Queen. A Queen undaunted by an unkind day. And so the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh left Auckland to set out on their long journey by rail, by road and by air through the North and South Islands of this splendidly loyal country. seeing here is sometimes called Britain's larder for the home country takes 70 percent of New Zealand's exports and nearly all of that is butter cheese and meat we're not all farmers here but those of us who are reckon we're specialists proud of our beasts our cows and our sheep proud of our land our dominion which supplies more than half of Britain's imported butter and one-third of her imported cheese and meat we are farmers we are food producers. This is farming country.
and it is fitting that the Queen is meeting such farming people as this. Harold Tickler, a dairy farmer, typical of his kind, typical of the living New Zealand the Queen will meet on this tour. The kind of New Zealand we want her to see. It was not all formality. The Duke himself was at the wheel when they went to visit the Alton Lodge stud farm. An interlude of a special interest to one whose royal racing colours are so familiar at home. At Alton Lodge, the Queen had an opportunity of seeing some of New Zealand's bloodstock. And there was a refreshing atmosphere of leisure about the scene. mindful of her own children at home in the English winter, the Queen is interested in the young people to whom her visit means so much. In our schools, the Maori child and the Pākehā, or white child, sit side by side for their lessons. But for all their equality in education and opportunity, the Māoris maintain their own idiom in life, in customs, and in the arts. Our old arts, with his chisel of greenstone, one of our carvers is working on totara wood. Long before Christopher Columbus discovered America, our Māori craftsmen had reached New Zealand. They called it uh, the land of the long white cloud. We have kept our arts and much of the way of life that we brought here from Polynesia hundreds of years before Captain Cook came here. This is one of our typical Maori camps. And here, our women folk have no need to build fires to cook by. All they need to do is to fill such bags as these and carry them to be cooked by nature in the nearest hot spring. Such is this unique, fertile and devoted dominion on the far, far side of the earth that awaited its queen. They come to Hamilton, our largest inland city, and the very hub of our great dairying industry. Hamilton was once an outpost of the Maori Wars, where land could be bought for a pair of boots now it's the main town of the rich dairy country. And what about this now? One of the Bowen brothers, our world's champion sheep shearers, he can shear a sheep in two and a quarter minutes. It's speed like this which is bringing our export of wool up to around 200,000 tonnes a year. It's almost as natural to ride horseback in New Zealand as it is in a good many other countries to ride a bicycle. Most of us here carry in our minds vivid pictures of the Queen herself as a horsewoman. We recollect that grace of hers now as we see her come amongst us, so youthful and so elegant. Tirau, only a century ago, was a waste of fern, bush and swamp. Now it enables our women of New Zealand to plan a special homage to the Queen in flowers. 
The richness and colour of these flowers we offer today in Tirau owe their origin to our forefathers, the old settlers only a few generations back, who burnt off the bush and scrub and found they had made seed beds for grass and clover from which they were able to work our land into its present fertility. They flocked into Tirau from the farmlands miles around to meet our queen. There are those flowers the women folk spent so many hours arranging for this unforgettable New Year's Day at Tirau. meeting not just officials, but men and women who work with their hands. There's someone we know, Harold Tickler, the dairy farmer we saw on his own farm herding the cattle. Beryl, his wife, is by his side. Here they are now with their fellows, belonging to a community of British and Maori stock that doesn't believe in artificial distinctions between man and man. This is how we shall always remember the Queen and her husband on this New Year's Day of Summer. to the thermal region in the district of Rotorua, the country of geysers, of steam clouds, of hot springs. But not all the water here is hot, and small boys who have practiced their formation diving for weeks eagerly perform before the royal visitors. This happy splashing of the youngsters, unawed by the royal visitors, will leave a pleasant human memory of this region where nature is so weird. For weird it is steaming and bubbling and boiling as the Queen is shown round by the famous Maori guide Rangi. From boiling water to bubbling sulphur and mud. The Maoris here in the Rotorua district proudly trace their ancestry back to Arawa, one of the canoes in which the first Maoris arrived in New Zealand 600 years ago. Maoris came here in seven canoes in about the year 1350. They were called the Vikings of the Sunrise and we recall them today in these canoes that ride the water again to honor our Queen.